John. Well, how was the trip? Okay. Well, come on, we're parked outside. I rented a beach house for the summer. You'll really dig it. The surf is about 20 feet from the door, and there's a cove. Hey, can we wait a minute? Sure. Hey, uh, give me your ticket. I'll get your luggage. Discretion of my youth. <laughs> Mike's visiting me for the summer. They have a soft drink machine around here somewhere. Yeah. Right around the corner. You need some change. I've got my own. Passenger J. O. Milligan. Please report to the information desk. Passenger J. O. Milligan. Information desk. Miss February. Flew away. Lewis, Washington, and Philadelphia. Now you always drink two of those? The kid's a root beer head. Were you sick or something in there? Yeah. Well, let's go see the Taj Mahal. Can you open the door quick? Yeah. The bathroom's down there. Son Michael. How do you do? How do you like California? Michael Ambrose, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> John, why don't you join us? Well, how do you like California? John, I haven't seen you in over a year. You're due for a checkup. I'll come in soon. Michael, why don't you step in number three there? Coswell will join you in a minute. Hold me, John. Yeah. He, uh, seemed a little short of breath. Have you noticed? Well, he hasn't been feeling well since he got off the plane yesterday. He says it was a turbulent flight, but I say it's all those soft drinks he's been downing. He's been doing nothing but sleeping since he arrived. That and running to the john between soft drinks. What's it like to be the son of a famous writer? Where I live in Michigan, they don't allow his books in the library. So no one knows who I am. You interested in sports? Mm. Do you play baseball? Mm -mm. The saxophone. Whoops. I was engaged to a saxophone player once. <laughs> okay. You didn't marry the saxophone player? You know, I think it's the only smart thing I ever did in my life. Too bad for him. Uh... Mike Ambrose? I'm Dr. Kelly. Hey, I'll see you later. See ya. Okay, take your shirt off, please. 
How do you like California? When did he have his last checkup? I don't know. Childhood diseases? I don't know. Well, chicken pox? Measles? <laughs> I, I don't know. I wasn't there. Is there any history of diabetes in your family? That's not the disease that runs in my family. How long have you lived in Michigan? Since I was five. You live with your mother? She died two years ago. I lived with my grandmother. How did your mother die? Malnutrition. Hmm? Of the soul. Michael Ambrose? Mm hmm. All right, all through. What is it, growing pains? Does one ever outgrow growing pains? Dr. Connie and I both feel that Michael should have a thorough checkup. At a lab equipped to perform tests that we can't handle here. Here's the address. Have Michael there at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning and see that he doesn't have anything to eat or drink after midnight tonight. The urine was positive. Now, that could be the result of the soft drink binge. Or... Or diabetes? Yes. I'll call you as soon as I have the lab report. That should be no later than tomorrow afternoon. Mark. Mm. Does he have it? Hold on, John. You want him to enjoy this summer festival you planned? This is to ensure that he does, that's all. Well, is it uh, all right to take him to a baseball game tonight? The Dodger game? I'd like to join you. Well, come on along. Oh, you haven't seen Michael for a long time. I'm sure you want to keep him to yourself. I, I just wanted to tell you that uh, they're bringing out a paperback of five of my books, so I'm, I'm sort of stuck with giving a party tomorrow afternoon. I know that sounds like a crashing bore to you, but... It's okay. I'll, uh, I'll invite some young people, and you know, you'll get to meet some of my friends. Mike, I, I know there's that test tomorrow, but after it's over, you'll have fun. What? Tomorrow! Fun, can you hear? Yeah. Tomorrow, fun. Mike, I, I want you to enjoy this summer. I, I know things have been rough on you, and, and I haven't spent the time with you I should have, but. 
I hope I can atone. I mean, I... I hope you'll give me the opportunity to make up for the time I've lost. I'd like to do that. After the test tomorrow, Mike. I'm, I'm hoping you won't go back at the end of the summer. I'm, I'm hoping you'll stay here with me. Do you think you could do that, Mike? for lunch. What are you reading? Oh, sex and garbage. Is that the answer to your first question or your second? I like sex and garbage. Listen, I'm a working girl. My idea of relaxing isn't a book like, oh, who wrote those books you like so much? The one about the man with a funny hat and the pipe? Conan Doyle. And they aren't books, they're short stories. And it isn't a hat, it's a deer stalker. Oh, well, what's the difference? Oh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Oh, I'll get it. All right. Uh, Dr. Welby here. Oh, yes, I was expecting you. Go ahead. Yes, I see. Yes, I will. 180. What's the amount of absorption? Well, thank you. Goodbye. <coughs> I'll see if I can spot him. Hold on. Yoo-hoo! John Ambrose! Dirty book writer! Blockbuster novelist! John! Here he is. Hello. What? Could you speak up, please? Do Dr. Welby, forgive me. Yes. Michael, he's terrible. He won't come out of his room. What? John, go into his bedroom and tell me what he looks like. Hurry, I'll wait. Michael? How do you feel? <laughs> yes. But his uh, his face is flushed and his uh, his, his breath is labored and. Conscious, yes, he's con conscious. You don't die from it, do you? John, he has to go into the hospital. Right away. I'll call St. John's and meet you there. Michael? We have to go to the hospital. Another free ride in your super speedster automobile. Mike. You have diabetes. Mm -hmm. God, I'm sorry, Mike. Can you make it to the car? Yeah. It's not that bad, you know. I mean, you, you can live with it. You know, you're getting gray, John. You're getting to be an old man. Get some rest now, Mike. There'll be somebody in every few hours to collect a specimen. All you have to do is just lie there and relax. All right? Swinging. Why didn't you say something when you felt so weak? Well, uh, 
He was busy feeding the animals, and I'm just a visitor to his zoo. John? I'll be back. What do you feed him for breakfast? Nails? He is tough, isn't he? I bent two needles getting through his skin. Well, he's had to be. After my wife and I split up, she just fell apart. She needed a man, Mike became that man. They were very close. Too close. Then she died, and now it is. Sounds like a scene from one of your novels. John, wake up. Mike isn't a man, he's a boy. And he's alone and frightened. No matter how tough he pretends to be. In the next few months, during his initial period of adjustment to the disease, he's going to need someone. Someone he can rely on. Someone who's strong and loving and there. He's going to need you. Very much. Yes, he will, won't he? Good. I'm glad. <laughs> then so am I. Mike will be in the hospital about a week to regulate his insulin dosage and his diet. In a few days, he'll appear perfectly healthy. From then on, there's no reason why he can't lead a normal life in every respect. If he avoids complications. What is a normal life? I wonder. <laughs> Good, Mike. Good. I'd rate you an expert in the grapefruit group. We can throw that away now and graduate to this. It contains everything you'll need to give yourself your daily insulin injections. Well, my survival kit. For the rest of my life, I pop myself daily with that stuff. In a short time, these self-injections will become second nature. Second nature, huh? Hey, man. Nobody says it's easy. No? Mm-mm. But it's worth it. May I have a drink of water, please? Let me get you some fresh water. This melted ice. Oh, God, I have a very pleasant disease. Hello, Michael. Brought you some things. Some interesting literature. How to live with diabetes. You and diabetes, diabetes and you. Charlie Chan meets diabetes. Diabetes meets Frankenstein and the Wolfman. Oh, and uh, some diabetic candy bars. Michael. Mike? Mike, I, I don't know if you heard me the other night. You were in the bathroom when we got home from the game? Have you given it any thought? Well, will you stay with me permanently? <laughs> hey, Mike, that makes me very happy. Thank you for the gifts. De nada. Dr. Kylie brought me a gift this afternoon, too. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. My insulin kit. I could withdraw from insulin at any time, couldn't I? What do you mean? Well, I could go without my shot and no one would know whether I 
had or hadn't. Until it was too late. Think about it. Good night, John. How do you take your coffee? Sweet and light. Yeah. This is uh, this morning's. My housekeeper usually keeps a fresh pot alive, but <laughs> this is her day off. Here. Are you all right, Mr. Ambrose? Yeah. No. What is it? Michael. What's wrong with him? Well, other than being totally insane, there's nothing wrong with him. What does he do? Well, for one thing, he goes around the house day and night saying on or off, on or off. On or off? Insulin. He threatens to withdraw from insulin. I mean, we can, can be sitting at dinner having a conversation. He'll suddenly say on or off, out of the blue. The other day, he said on or off. I said I wasn't going to take any more of it. And then he said that... The diabetics should always wear shoes outdoors because they, they, they should guard against infection, especially where the feet are concerned. Is, is that true? Yes. And, and that a foot wound, unless it's promptly treated, could lead to amputation of the leg? Yes. Yeah, well, he's out there now, barefoot. He is. Charged out of here, down the beach, yelling amputation like some kind of a war cry. Did you ever climb out onto that mess of rocks out there? Well, not yet. I suppose he's saving that for my birthday. Why is he doing this? Amputation! Amputation! Mike! Mike! Amputation! Mike! Mike! I want to see you! Come on, stop this horseplay. Come here. I want you in my office tomorrow. Here, put your shoes on and keep them on. Why are you punishing him? It came around to him this summer. It'll be all right. It's not a deep wound, but bring him to the office tomorrow. Fine. Look, uh, can we talk? Sure. Let's go down the beach. I don't mean to pry, but how did his mother die? It may have been an overdose of barbiturates in combination with alcohol, or some allergy to one or the other, or a combination of both. In any case, Mike found her in bed one morning. She had been going downhill for years. Look what 
just the final stunt. Is that why you divorced her? No. No, that was my fault. All my fault. My first book has just been published, well received. It's consumed with success. Totally impressed with my talent, charm, sophistication. There was a girl who was equally impressed. Only years later did I realize the value she had given to my life. But then she was no longer there. And one day, two years ago, she was no longer anywhere. I buried myself in guilt. I couldn't even bring myself to attend the funeral. You can't forgive me for that, even if he could for the others. And he's picked exactly the right way to torture me. By threatening to take himself from me the same way. Is that what he's doing? What do you think? On or off? You think he hates you that much? Who knows, poor kid. Who knows? Well, hello. Hello, Dr. Wilby. Hi, honey. Huh. Out for the evening? Mm -hmm. Stop by to pick up a tie. Huh. Excuse me, dear. Mm -hmm. Besides, there's something I wanted to ask you about the Ambrose boy. Be right down, Annie. He's playing games with his father, and I think they could be dangerous games. I told you I didn't want to be disturbed all day. Oh, all right, put him on. Look, Sid, as my purported agent, you know I have a 60% revision due in a week. Me? Not tonight. I'm sure it would. Look, as you may have read in the paper, since I only see you when your contract is due for renewal, as you may have read, my son is visiting me for the summer. I can't take off just like that. I know it would. Oh, Sid, get off my back. I'll see about it. Yes? I just wanted to. Yes! Well, I just thought I'd... Yep. Mike, I, I have a load of work to do, and not much time to do it in. Now, if you can just wait. Yeah, sure. that. You like that? No. Got the Beatles, Donovan, Gandhi. Never mind. Look, I'm sorry I was abrupt in there. It's okay. Is there something you wanted? No. Uh-uh. I have everything. Even diabetes. What did you want to do tonight? I don't want to do anything, John. Uh, my agent wants me to go to New York tonight. Go. Well, I don't want to leave you. It's a, it's a good opportunity. It's one of those talk shows, the last bit of replacement. You sure? You'll be all right. Go fly, John. I'll come back early tomorrow morning. Don't rush. Listen, Mike, this is important. Exposure like this could mean 20,000 copies, hardcover. That's a lot of money. Go. Uh, there's food in the refrigerator, and here's some money if you want to eat out. 
sorry, but this is important. I just can't understand that kind of thinking. That's because you never had John Ambrose for a father. John's been playing games all of his life. He played everyone from Dostoevsky to Harold Robbins. He's been artiste, swinger, entrepreneur, father. I've never read anything he's written. Oh, he wrote one good book. Very sensitive. <laughs> Didn't make a cent. He's been writing trash ever since. If Mike's trying to shake up his father by threatening to go off of insulin, He's sure getting the desired effect. Well, he wouldn't do that. You can't tell what this boy might do. You can't tell at all. It's Channel 7 at 11.30 if you're interested. Michael, hmm? if it's really important to you, I can... Can what? I can stay. Oh. There is no one else in my life. There is no one I care for except you. Touchdown. Mike, listen to me. Mike. I am approaching middle age. I am rich and famous and lonely and care for no one except a son that hates me. What do you want, sympathy? My mother loved you. I know. My mother loved me, too. Yes. My mother loved me, but she died. I couldn't stop her, Mike. I was 2,000 miles away. Do you know how it is to love someone and have them die on you? I wasn't worth it. Truth. One point for you. See you when you get back. Mm -hmm. Do we, Mr. Ambrose?
Professor Ambrose, uh, you're probably the leading exponent of the sex and sensation novel in this country. How do you justify your kind of literature? Well, I write what people want to read. I didn't invent sex. I only describe it. Well, sociologists have said that the literature of a country reflects its ideals or the lack thereof. Do you agree with that? Well, did the painting invent the bowl of cherries? If, if my books didn't strike responsive chords in American readers, they wouldn't buy them. Yeah, but where then does it end? I mean, isn't there a distinction between freedom and license? I thought I heard John Ambrose's voice. Mm -hmm. Make that decision, you? Doesn't that show come from New York? I think it does. I wonder if he took Michael with him. Do you contend that your books contain philosophical or political ideas that would be suppressed, or is it just the prurient episodes that might be censored? One man's sex is another man's politics. That's been true since the Trojan War, but supposing you are talking about pornography. Now, in certain countries in Europe, pornography is illegal. And no great. Oh, hello. Evils have erupted. Are you alone? It's, it's yes. The shy, the are you all right? Inhibited yes. Mike, One way or another. Now, you wouldn't do anything stupid like not taking your insulin, would you? Oh, me? Standards Sometimes games can get mixed up with life, the is going and the games can become deadly. I gotta hang up, Doc. Yogi Bear's still on TV, and I don't want to miss him. The greatest cultural revolution in history. I didn't create that revolution. But you did prophesy. I was in the neighborhood. Now you're in the house. Well? Well? Well, are you on or off? Time will tell. I don't have that kind of time, Mike. This is the only moment I'm taking for myself to discover the truth about you. Then I move on to my next patient. That's my routine. I've had some patients who have gone off, and I've lost them, as we say in the doctorhood. And it matters to me a great deal. But I can't afford to linger, because I have so many other patients who are still on. Do you know why he asked me here this summer? Yes. He wants me to love him. Yes, he does. Well, I don't love anyone. Not anymore. I see. She waited for him. And waited. And even when she committed the ultimate act to bring him to her, she failed. And you know why? Because she didn't know John Ambrose. He can't love anyone. He can love you. Mike, he's a very immature man. He's lonely. And he's afraid. He's afraid of death. He's afraid of life. He's afraid of you. You have so much ahead of you. So many discoveries, so many events, so many people. People who are waiting to love you. But nothing and nobody waits for him anymore. He had those opportunities once and let them slip through his fingers. Now the only opportunity he has left is you. Why don't you take a few years and teach him the good things? Help him. Love him. Show him how it's done. Teach him how to become a father. He wants so very much to learn that. He wants especially to learn to love you. And he can't do that without your love. 
Yes, you. Would you like to ride with me back to my house? When's he due back? Mm, a couple of hours. Let's say we um, drive out to the airport and meet him. Okay. Mike, what are you doing here? Well, I was in the neighborhood. Well, what is it? Everything's all right, John. I'm on, not off. For good? For good. Mark, I don't, I don't know what you did, but thank you. <laughs> Well, it's late, and I have a full day tomorrow, so I'm going home and get some sleep. I'll leave you in each other's hands. Good night. Good night. Well, ready to go home? <laughs> yeah, ready. Oh, you don't mind if I stop by the office for a minute? Yes. You really mind? Yes. I really mind. Okay. <laughs> 